All right, guys, uh, go ahead and get your review guides out. I'm going to go over some of the questions. Remember, the review guides not due, so uh, I'm going to hopefully go over this, hope, allow you to uh, write down some answers and help you prepare for the test. As I said, if you want to go ahead and get out your review guides, this might help you. Just check over your answers, make sure you're all right. So, so go through with the first one. What atomical features distinguish primates from their ancestors? When we talked about this in class, um, the, the, we had a bunch of six major characteristics that make primates unique. But the main two that you want to put in there is the fact that they have grasping fingers and toes and their eyes shifted to the front. Those two things are going to allow for a larger brain development. When we, monkeys come along, they're going to be, um, monkeys are going to be diurnal and, uh, Therefore, they also have color vision. When we look among the apes, the most distant relative to humans, remember, it would be something that's not an ape. So chimpanzees are apes, uh, orangutans are apes, gorillas are apes, and gibbons, all of these are apes. So if this was on the test, you can't necessarily differentiate based on whether it's ape versus monkey. But what you can differentiate is the great apes, which is chimpanzee, orangs, and gorillas, versus gibbons. So the correct answer in this case would be gibbons. When we look at number four, compared with Australopithecus, Homo habilis, what did it do? Okay, yeah, it had a greater uh, brain volume. Um, you would not put B there because it did have opposable thumbs, but so did Australopithecus, and it did not use language, and it was not more ape-like. The best answer has greater brain volume. Watch out for this one being a mark all that apply. It could throw in there the use of tools. Um... What did the first mammal look like? It looked like a tree shrew. And uh, when you look at the actual um, evolution of primates, the, they've been around for about 60 million years ago, um, ever since the uh, 5 million years after the KT extinction event. And they had forward-facing eyes. And those eyes and hands allowed for increased uh, movement. Lorises and lemurs, <coughs> we consider them to be prosimians. Uh, remember, that means before ape, and they live on the island of Madagascar, um, and they are nocturnal, so they hunt at night. Orangutans, gribbons, chimpanzees are not monkey, but apes, um, and they are larger than monkeys, and major distinguishing tail for those who are going to go to the zoo tomorrow or Sunday, they do not have tails, so all apes do not have tails. The first hominids were members of the genus Australopithecus, and they evolved in what um, in Africa they always involved in Africa all the answers would be Africa and lived on earth between um, roughly about 4 million uh, 3.5 but 4 million years and 1.5 million years uh, Lucy was a very important discovery um, you got to remember it was discovered by Donald Johansson and once again it was clearly evident that Lucy would have been an upright walker um, that's a major distinction that we know from Lucy. All of these terms could easily be looked up. shouldn't be too hard. Uh, the only one that may be a little bit different to you is diurnal. And uh, diurnal just means to uh, be active during the daytime. When we look at the short answer, um, 16 I've already answered um, a lot. Um, 17 what? Characteristics do all primates have? Um, that comes directly from our notes when it refers to the fact that they had um, the same type of dentition, stereoscopic vision, increased brain development, <coughs> excuse me, digital mobility, uh, limb structure, and then flat nails would be the last one. Uh, all of those things help them become more advanced. And they would have been found in, in uh, trees of those early primates. So to answer this question, <clears throat> because of the formation of Isthmus of Panama, um, Africa was a giant forest. It's going to change into a swamp and, and more of a savanna that we see. Um, as this happened, as this happened, habitat shrinks. We're going to get this kind of bottlenecking effect that occurs. And the key term that we're going to learn here is adaptive radiation, where to fit this new environment, we have a many different types of hominid species that evolved to fit that. Eventually, they all kind of die out, leaving only us, but this is a good example of adaptive radiation. When you look at what, what is the, the key evidence that links humans to chimpanzees, it's DNA evidence. Um, the fact that we are 99% the same to chimpanzee 
and chimpanzees actually more closely related to humans than to a gorilla is good evidence um, that we the close relatedness that we are. When we talked about what are two characteristics that were milestones to the path leading to human evolution, um, once again, the fact that they walked upright and the fact they had bigger brains. So that's an important part of uh, this question. you got to know those two things um, and make sure you know how we know it walked upright. What characteristics lead towards us knowing that it walked upright? You can look through all the 23 and 24, pretty basic. Uh, 25, remember, you got to think, what's the importance of having graveyards? Why have food? Why have weapons? Things like that. Um, 26, first hominid evolved would have been Australopithecus afrensis. Um, Africa, and it means um, southern ape of, from a long time ago. 27 is really important. I'm not going to go over that. If you have questions, you can do that. And 28, I told you to go through in your notes. So those are all good questions that you should know. Uh, I'm going to skip down to uh, 31. Java and Peking man were examples of Homo erectus. Homo habilis roughly translates into um, handyman. And then um, there's a couple more good essay questions. Feel free to ask me about those. I'm going to pause now and kind of change directions and talk about our test. The test itself will be, consist of 40 uh, multiple choice questions. I will then have about 10 fill in the blank questions. And then what I'm going to have to do currently right now I have um, a bunch of different essay questions and I think uh, right now I have 10 of them. Have you pick four. Uh, I might have you um, Maybe I'll cut that down to eight, and you get to pick four of them. Most of them will actually come directly from the uh, review guide, but I'll tell you one of them right now that I guarantee. So that way you at least have one um, locked-in guaranteed question. I say question that you should be able to get five out of five. So the question is this. You find a fossilized skeleton dating back six million years. What traits or characteristics would you look for to tell you if it walked upright? And while I'm at it, I might as well tell you one more, right? Actually, the rest of these are all directly from your review, your review guide, so make sure you know those. Um, that's going to be basically the format of the test. If I were to change anything, I might increase this or this, but the fact that they're, this will, pretty, will stay pretty constant. The test will be out of 100 questions. There will not be any additional points or anything like that. So uh, make sure you do study. Hopefully this review guide helps you. And uh, if you have any additional questions that you want me to answer over the review guide, you can either email me or you can uh, simply just uh, come to class Monday, prepare with those questions, and I'll, or Tuesday if you're a B-Day guy, and I'll go over those. I know you guys are probably sick of me uh, creating these little morphos and all that kind of stuff. So I got a special guest to kind of wrap up the uh, the video. Uh, I'm making this a couple days before state, so let's go get them. I hope you guys all show up and attend and support the guys. And uh, just a special message um, from one of your classmates. We will. We will. We will take state. We will. We will. We will take state. Go prep.